I'm Lauren from Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. And action on Season 3. Welcome to Voices of Defiance. I'm your host, Stargate Pioneer, the freshly, cleanly, unshaven man this morning. And with me is the star of the show, the lovely, the talented, the everlasting social media guru, (laughs) Shannon. What's up, guys? And then also with me is the very talented, amazing, and creative Mr. Sean. (laughs) <laughs> I do him a logo and I'm suddenly a talented. Well, it's nice to have something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can hold on to that for a little while. All right. I'll, I'll stick with that for a little bit. Okay. So. <laughs> hey, just a reminder, you can catch us at VoicesOfDefiance.com. Go to the contact page. Find all the great ways you can reach us. We do have a voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1 or 612-888-2751. We are recording this live on Sunday, June 14th, 2015, in front of a live studio audience on Chatwing through Mixler and YouTube. So on Sunday mornings at 11, you can find us at our live page, gunnageek.com slash live or voicesofdefiance.com slash live and find all the great ways to listen to us as we record podcast number 34 this week on the Defiance Season 3 premiere. Woohoo! Shannon, I know you were watching. <laughs> Holy crap, it was awesome. You can't really talk to her when that's happening. I couldn't even tweet. I could I was so <laughs> stunned by everything that was happening, I forgot to tweet. Yeah, I know. I was live tweeting the first episode. Then I had to do something at nine o'clock, which is the second episode. I'm like, oh then I, I texted Shannon. I which like, I took over. Yeah. It's like you need to start live tweeting because I have to leave. She's like, Yeah, I know, I got it. You know, it's funny because at first I didn't know you were there because they both pop up on my phone. So I'm like, I did not say that. What's going on here? <laughs> then I'm like, oh, okay. He's Twitter it. has achieved consciousness. It was just start <laughs> tweeting without I'm like, It's good consciousness because it was getting retweeted. So it was good. I have to say a big thank you to listener who are out there and they are live tweeting with us. They're listening to or reading our tweets. They're replying them to them, favoriting them, retweeting them. It made Friday night real, real fun. So I just want to thank everybody. It was fun. That's the first time you've been on live tweet in a long time, right? Because last season you were recording your other podcast at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I do another podcast on the Guinea Geek Network on the TV show Arrow. It is called the Starling Tribune. And our record time is Friday night, right smack dab in the middle of Defiance. So that kind of sucked. And then I believe it was airing on Thursday nights at the uh, end of season two. So that was also in the middle of another podcast, but it, it's no matter. We have season three, episodes one and two, The World We Seize and The Last Unicorns. Hey, do you know who wrote the first episode? Jesus. <laughs> no, Jesus was not there. And uh, if you do call him Jesus, you just called Kevin Murphy Jesus. Well, he might have a beard. You don't know. <laughs> he might have an incredible power over loaves and fishes. You also don't know that. <laughs> I'm guessing that he Have you is... ever seen him multiply fish? You don't know. <laughs> no. He's a god of divine. I've seen him multiply seasons, though. See? Close enough. And that's more impressive than fish. Fish just feed a couple people. Seasons entertain thousands. Millions, sir. Millions. Is it millions? Is that what their share is? <laughs> Something like that. We'll get the ratings for you guys next week. I didn't have a chance to look them up, and I don't think the overnights were out yet, but anyway... Yes, The World We Seize was written by the executive producer of the series, Mr. Kevin Murphy. And it was both these episodes were directed by Michael Nankin. 
who is a also a, a Defiance producer, but he's also been very active in Caprica, Flash Forward, Battlestar Galactica. Go ahead, take a look at his filmography. He is uh, definitely historied in the sci-fi world. So, And then The Last Unicorns was written by Carrie Drake, who is, by her IMDb page, pretty much a newcomer. But I think she did pretty well. I'd say it, it, it took me hours after. Mainly because I had to digest the entire two hours, but it took me hours after to realize that to me, the last unicorns is like completely a metaphor for Christy, which makes me even sad now afterwards. But like, oh my God, I didn't realize she is the last one because basically she's the last. Well, she's not completely pure <laughs> because of, you know, the right. whole arch thing, but, <laughs> but she's like the last pure character that we have. I was going to say she dumped. Treasure doll Treasure. off yeah, so we'll the She's arch. not completely pure, but she's still kind of pure. Actually, a lot of the characters now are... And this reminds me, and, and it's funny that you make a BSG connection. This reminds me of the last season of BSG where everybody just kind of turned on each other. Yep. They got more animal-like as we or progressed through BSG. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was yeah. like Predator versus Predator, and they just all started killing each other and uh, I, honestly i got a game of thrones feel when i was watching the first part where they just slaughtered the entire macaulay family and i'm just like oh come on man uh-huh my prediction uh, wasn't too far off with george R. R. martin now was it yeah I, nope. no not really and I, and I told you I, I was pretty confident that christy was gonna go i just didn't realize the first episode rape ah. was gonna be right there yeah, I got to say, I'm so very happy that they did a two hour. And I don't know if it was produced originally to be two hours or if they were planning on two separate airings like a, a week apart. But I'll tell you, I would have gotten close to rage quitting after that first episode had that n second episode not been there. Yeah, I, I was not happy. Let <laughs> just say I was not happy. I mean, just one. OK, so Quentin gets it. OK. And then Rafe gets totally pummeled by a machine gun on full auto you know there's no saving him at that point in time but you he came in he rushed in he was saving his baby girl and his grandson oh okay you know i i can he went out in a blaze of glory got that but then i did not comprehend everything that was going on around christy because she was basically it was inducing stalma to say look we have to protect luke at all costs and that's the only way that stalma actually killed her and Christy knew that she was going to die to protect You know, her. some people were telling me, oh, you know, Stama has no feeling. She just flat out killed her. I'm like, no. I mean, look at the... She saw Luke's arm in that closet. Yep. And the look on her face, she knew she had to save two lives by taking one. Because there's no way that if Rom Tech found the baby, I mean, the baby would be dead look, already. if Psychopath found the baby, all three of them would be dead. And she knew that. So it was a simple... This is a very classic Stama moment. She did the math and came out like, okay... One life for two, and the one that I'm going to kill would gladly give up for Luke. So this was a simple math problem. She did it. She didn't like it. She was she very upset it about it. She hated it afterwards. But it's still, Stama will do what needs to be done. And then That's she always put that what mask she does. back on, and she's like, okay, the stench of human here's, we're done here. Let's go. But that's the thing. Stama is, is one of the very few characters mm -hmm. who isn't like turning away from being very Stama ish. This is textbook Stama. Yep. She does what needs to be done. She did a great job. Sad. It was horrible, but she was trying to manipulate the entire two hours, right? Yeah, and it's just she's not getting. It's anywhere. just freaky how much the Tars have been lowered because they had nothing on this guy, and he knew all their tricks. And the look on Daytek's face when he realized it's the Beast, he's like, "Oh crap! Well, I've just met my match because he's nowhere in the same league." But the way he plays the Tars the entire time was brilliant. I mean, I I like even though there were depths, I like how dirtier. And messy this season starting off with. I don't know. I could go with a little less dirty. Nah, I, I hope there's not, you know, that if they start slaughtering the entire cast, and you know, that pretty much They've already you, started slaughtering half the cast. It's pretty much tells you that there goes fourth season, but you know. Uh, we, we, we open with yes, three deaths of but, okay, main characters. But, but Quentin, he wasn't really in the second season until the end, so he didn't have a big role. So, I mean, I hate to say he, it, but he's an easy red shirt. He was supposed to be in California with Clone Kenya. That's where he was supposed to be. Exactly. And he had been better off. So he shouldn't have listened to his mom. So Nobody should Quint ever listen to Quint his mom about anything. became an easy red shirt. I understood. The moment he walked out the door, I knew he was going to die. The moment he walked out the door. Okay. So 
and I knew Christy going in. I, I had the feeling all the songs, because I, I, like I was telling you guys last time, she finished her shooting way earlier than the rest. I was reading her tweets. Okay, but that's fourth wall knowledge. You can't, but still, you I'm, can't go but, off that. Okay, but that's what started my feeling that something was going to happen to her. Yeah, I just didn't expect it this early. I really didn't either. I, I would have preferred if it would have been, because basically they just did this whole slaughter family, or whole slaughter type thing of the, the whole family, and then moved on. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It was just, it felt very thronesy to me. Yeah. And you were right on the money on that. Wow. Well, I didn't expect it completely, but when you saw the, the human head picket fence on top of that roller, it's like <laughs> you knew bad things. That's straight out of Game of Thrones, first of all. And then and the whole ear appetizer thing, the human ear appetizer. Mm, I'm going to get that the next time I go to Buffalo Wild Wing. Yeah, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Little side of extra wax, please. Uh, oh, yeah. You nasty. And oh, I am not a delusional man. No, you're just flat up crazy. No, you're just a psycho. He was right. Psychopath. I don't know what the Votan word for it is, but Daytag was absolutely correct when he's like, that's psychopath. Yeah. No, he's right. General Rom Talk, the Beast, played by Lee Turgeson. Amazing acting again. I mean, they found somebody to play just a delicious bad guy. He's, you can believe that the guy is halfway off his rocker and that he's hell bent on world domination. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is not exactly what you call difficult at this particular juncture. No, I mean, I was thinking that. How many people are actually left in the world, right? Not many, because I think a vast amount of population concentration was in New York City for the humans. And they kept them in check, I think. Well, now that the E-Rip is gone, basically. Exactly. The you have everyone kept them joining in, check. in order to, for all the surviving people, population to survive, you're either going to be against or you're going to be for the VC. And if you're facing down the general, I'm going to be for the VC. See, I'm wondering, did the Earth Republic just collapse or did they pull back? Did they centralize their defenses? They haven't said. They just, uh, and like Amanda said, that Pottinger's moved on. Yeah, I just, I didn't get that. Okay, so that's a whole lack of plot right there because you had Amanda's delicious turn to be warped with Pottinger by the end of season two. And that was just all negative. It was like, why did we even go through this last season? So she spent seven months alone trying to keep the town together and she reverts back to classic Amanda, which is great, but she had character growth and that's gone now. Yeah, whatever. Unless he comes back. I mean, Pottinger's supposed to be in this season, but... Well, I don't think it's necessary for Pottinger to come back for her to have growth. I think what's bothering me is when you watch her and Nolan run around the town slicing up doctors and forcing this stuff and chaining up hostages and stuff like that, this is not good behavior. You look at a man and you're like, I don't like her now. And Nolan has always been like that. We just have tried to believe that he was different. Nolan, this is not different Nolan's behavior for Nolan. He's always been a soldier. He's always kind of a schmuck. Yeah. I mean, he has been since the show started. He is in the game. He screws everybody over as long as it's not. It's him and his daughter and everybody else can suck it. And that's the way he's always been. But that's very characteristic. Amanda is now becoming that way as well. You know, they stun gun the poor doctor and, you know, rip stuff off of her. Yeah. Protoform and just be like, well, that's the way it is. <laughs> we need it. You're the guinea pig, literally. I mean, and that's even after they convince her to stay like this town needs a doctor. We really need you. We really need to stick together and then, yeah, grab her, throw her oh, down. Oh, by the way, we really need you. We really need your skin now. So we just need more from you. Yeah. If you don't work on her, we'll shoot you where you stand. Wow. That's just super great, guys. If this is what you have to do to save the town, town ain't worth saving. You know, at some point, you got to, there has to be a line and, and then, they just don't have one. Let me just tell you how weirded out I was. The fact that Doc was so freaked out with the Omec. She was trembling. That it doesn't happen. Doc has always been stoic and good human and collective in, of herself. And all of a sudden, she's freaking the hell out for the Omeg. That yeah, was, that was, a, that should have been a, I mean, this woman is the same woman who in the very first episode basically put a tactical nuke off in the past there. And that didn't scare her. She's like, just don't bother me, puny human. I'm telling you. That's fine. Oh, she was, These people terrify her. Yeah. So that should be a clue. She was trying to get out, but then I don't know why she stayed. I really, the only reason I think she stayed is because she is very attached to Amanda. Well, legs, yes. Yes. I love how she called her legs. 
<laughs> yeah. That was awesome. I got to get my yayas out. I had to back it up. I'm like, did she just, was that just Amanda? Oh, that was Amanda standing next to her. Yes. Here uh-huh. you go, Lex. <laughs> Here's your tip. Because she knew she was busted. You know she's cheating somehow. She's not that good of a card player. You know, Doc, she could have left at the end of season two. She could have ignored everyone up top and stayed down below. But she came up top to save. She knew what to do. She knew what the ship was. She came up to help. And clearly all this time she saved. And now they've traumatized the poor Doc because clearly they saw how terrified she was of the Omek chick. And then not only did they force her, but then they, they held her down to help the Omek. I think Nolan's the only one around here that really truly has an appreciation of what's going on. Like, oh, so you have a ship. What's up with that? It's like he knows there's two of these. They're bad they can kick his rear end easily. They can actually, they can take three or four people on at the same time, no problem. They could take a charge blade without any, basically a, a cow prod without any flinching at all. It takes a bullet just to put them down. These people are dangerous and he knows there's more up there. Yeah. As nasty as his behavior is and as lawless as he tends to behave on, he is on point. He is a soldier. And he knows what the deal is, and he can understand the bigger picture, like you're saying. I will not dispute that. The problem I have with it is him and Amanda running the, we're going to make a deal for the entire town. We're going to make decisions with these evil warlords and all that. Or, you know, evil, I guess, what is it? Uh, oh, make aliens. Destroy, what, what was the thing? Something, oh, oh something. the t-shirt. Hold on, I got that in. Yeah, the, it was like con- destroy, con- conquer, kill... Uh, what was devour. it? Devour. Conquer, kill, devour. Yeah. Put that on a t-shirt, yeah. Yeah, put that on a t-shirt so you don't forget it. I mean, these, this is their battle. Conquer, kill, devour. These are not good people. This is not who you want to be making deals but with. But, I bet you. Find I, a different way to power I, the town. I bet you they use the Omeg to get rid of the general. Well, I, I no, wait a minute. What I think is going to happen is the Votanus Collective and what remains of Defiance forces are going to have to come together somehow, or the Omeg get caught in the crossfire somehow, and... They're going to have to band together to do that. Now, if the General Rom, General Tack, the Beast, ends up getting dead along the way, so much the better. But you, it's not just Rom. You've got, it's the whole Votanus Collective. This is just a major scout party. This is a major force on the move. There's more VC out there than just him. Yeah. I think this is sort of like Sherman's March to the Sea. This dude is just a spearhead. So this season, they're going to have to f- basically figure out which foe's the greatest threat all of them i know that but but it seems like now they formed an alliance with the omec sort of it's very shaky but they've got one yeah uh, they it's not really an alliance it's just we need the golanite yeah, yes but he didn't kill golanite. them right out so i mean he could have that's not an alliance that's <laughs> like i'm letting you live for now which is all all amanda and, and nolan are figuring did you on two doing. get the whole borg feel at the end when they're like showing oh all god their- yeah <laughs> oh yeah Yep. I mean, it's it is like that. That ship cannot be turned on. It's, it's very yeah. <laughs> it is very Borgish. Somebody and, should take the battery away right now. Borg sounds Swedish. <laughs> oh, there's well, some there's, of those bodies in there were definitely hard cut Swedes. All those purple people eaters. Oh. <laughs> Good one, baby. <laughs> Did you just think of that, or has that been going around? That's just what that's what they are. They're purple. They're gigantic. <laughs> they're, they're people eaters. People eaters. I love that. I, I'm totally using that. They're not one eyed on though. The <laughs> they are now purple people eaters. That is all I'm going to call them now. <laughs> <laughs> put that on a shirt. Yeah, put that on a shirt. Space vampires. They reminded me of the Wraith in Stargate Atlantis. I mean, it's a trope, but okay. But we hadn't heard of them until now. It's like, really? Yeah, they did pull it out of the thin air. Yeah. You know? Because it's not something we've ever had to deal with and everything. And it is kind of a, it's very comic booky how they just pulled it. It's like, oh, yes, it's ancient and they've oh, been by the here, way. but we've never mentioned it. <laughs> so, I mean, there's that. And I can understand that. I mean, they needed somebody because E-Rep's gone and, and all our all our characters have been kind of going. Through, so you needed to change the script. And I understand that. I mean, uh, you, you want this big war with the OMAC and or the big threat with the OMAC and the war with the VC. I mean, I can understand that. Let's see. Speaking of change and the E-Rep being gone, we now have the alliance of Amanda and Berlin, which I am loving. Yeah. I'm loving the badge. Every time I see her, it's just like, oh, poor Berlin. She got shot. Uh, she, but poor Berlin. She kicked butt. Like, even when she was kicking the crap out of Little Wolf, I was just like, oh, Anna Banana needs a hug. <laughs> yeah. 
That's exactly. I tweeted it wasn't that. What I got out of that? <laughs> she tells you just she needs a big hug, a little snuggle, poor I think thing. Arissa needs a hug too because she just let she let her do it. She didn't even put. She didn't even put up a fight. Oh, Arissa's like you know she has people fall all over. It's see and a banana. You need Berlin needs the hug in. She needs a good snuggle. She does. She needs okay. a friend. So, Sean, I got to ask you, how much was the commission for making that book cover? Because that was totally you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was cool, wasn't it? That was. I was like, oh, man, somebody got some creativity going on. But where's the printing press? I mean, like, there's no newspapers anymore. <laughs> exactly. I think it was just old. I mean, they didn't even have lights for the last, you know, however long it was. So, I, I don't know. It couldn't have been new. It had to be old. And did you guys catch that the deputy pool was from the pilot episode? Yes. Yes. Can you sign us for my boyfriend? Yeah. The whole guy here. Yeah. That was Ben from the first season. Right. So he's an indigene Ben, sabotaged the town, came back as an E-Rep human soldier in the second season. and Now a law keeper. Yeah. Now a law keeper with a boyfriend. So his character has had some evolution over the three season premieres. Yeah. He'll be a good red shirt. He does seem to die a lot. I mean, <laughs> he's been in a different uniform this time. I mean, he's, he's died he's, once he's, so far, just once, with a I mask know, on. Man. Uh, it's you will. I I don't know, man. <laughs> he's he's going to be a mechanism. It'll just so, be some kind of thing. Here's what I was kind of disappointed in. You see the whole Berlin Arissa thing, and she's kicking the crap out of her, and that, yeah, that needed a, to happen. That was awesome. But she needed to hug. Amanda didn't have any emotion towards Arissa at all because she I mean, had already she, transitioned with. Nolan that oh we've got a big thing that we've got to take care of right now we need to get the stasis net up otherwise we're going to be overrun with VC in a matter of days so they ignored that part yep. so I'm I'm waiting for on the next episode clip it showed Stama Brian they take back into town hey, my husband needs help there better be a showdown between Amanda and Stama that's what I'm at all season long all the summer long I've been waiting for that to happen so I hope they don't blow that off Kind of like what they did this time. Because that was a big thing. I mean, Kenya being killed. And let's see if they strip Sama down. Takes a piece of her flesh. Although it sure did look like the Omic chick was about to lick her neck. And I was paused right there for a long time. <laughs> that will be my screensaver should that happen. Oh, yeah. So Kinsey was played by newcomer uh, Nicole. Is that how you say her name? Kinsey. Yeah. K I N D. And I've, I, on closed captioning, I saw it spelled differently than I've seen it on the web. So in closed captioning, I, I think it was spelled K I N D Z E I. And there's a, an apostrophe in there somewhere. And I loved her. Oh, yeah. she is a flat. <laughs> That's my favorite part. She is a flat, beautiful woman. She too. hissed and growled. I love her. Yeah. I, well, how did they learn English? That's the thing. And he's like, I think you can understand me. And I'm like, and how is that? That should be the main thing right now. <laughs> Why do you understand me? All of a sudden, it's not a language that they knew from the old world. And all of a sudden, they can speak English. I, like, what? I wonder if that's part of their thing. Like, how they go and, like, do the Dread Harvest is, like, they go to these worlds and they have some fantastic understanding or technology or mental ability to understand the languages so that they can conquer them better. It's not like as their ship was coming in that they were receiving broadcasts from yeah, like TV no, and radio. Nobody to broadcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They had the whole Marvel Thor kind of coming down in pods of lightning. It was awesome. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then when the pods came down, there was that whole Terminator moment. Oh yeah. Yeah, when they're bent over and all of a sudden their their capsule comes open and you know, <laughs> expect them to be nude. They did borrow from a lot of sci fi and some fantasy for, for this. It it worked very well, but you're just like Terminator, Game of Thrones. Tron. Tron, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Those suits, holy crap, man! The, the suits and the bits, you know, the yeah, little fly exactly. things. Yes, which are, by the way, Shannon, did they remind you of some of Fitz's texts from Agents of Shield? Yes. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Which I'm now into the third episode of the second season. But actually, the CGI was really good. The effects, yeah, it was. They did a fantastic job. It was very. Uh, happy. They, they really did. I like how they click. That's their language. They click. Mm. Ah, I do that. You know. <laughs> yes, you do it so well. Yeah, but you click because you're old and you bend over. Yeah, mostly in my knees. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Amanda is this amazing shot. She really is, right? She is an accomplished sniper. We've seen it before. 
She is able to kneecap that guy right away. She's able to shoot that drone right away. But when it comes to hitting that OMAC... Yeah, uh, what the hell? She claimed it was because she was still recovering, but I don't think so. I think... I'm not she, buying it, man. Yeah, because after the first one, she would have reset and tried to aim a little bit better, but she didn't. She just took a double tap. Yeah, she's stone cold most of the time. I can't... I mean, that was either convenient writing or... I, I don't know, man, because... And look at what else she's doing. I mean, look at all the decisions she's making and the other things she... She doesn't care. I mean, she's like, oh, greater good. Greater good. Yeah, it might be bad, but greater good, which is always bad. I mean, anybody who says, oh, I'm doing this for the greater good, that person needs to be stopped almost unilaterally. Well, she doesn't have anything really. She has no family. Defiance no. is her family. And defiance is in the big defiance. She doesn't have anybody that she's close to around her anymore because Nolan left, Pottinger left, and her sister's. Son. Yeah, her sister's dead. So, yeah, she's alone and she's transitioned that to, well, I'm going to make my mark on this world by making Defiance a better place. So once you reach that stage, once you reach the stage of the town is more important than an individual, then you start making some screwed up decisions. Well, and then there's the, um, I mean, Tevkin, is it, is yeah. it Tevkin? Yeah. Yes. Yep. And you have Tevkin in there doing exactly I actually like his character. He does exactly what a predator would do, you know, well, to, to, to put you at ease, to get you where he needs to put you, to to do all those things, because he has a mission. He is the, one of the only people in the town who has very clearly defined goals. Get his daughter back. Get my daughter get back. Get the ship running. Get the ship running. And have my people dinner. eat my eat this planet. <laughs> all in time for dinner. Go get the rest of the purple people eaters and bring them down <laughs> for lunch. So I mean, this is a this is a clearly defined thing, and you can see it. And the only one I think who sees it clearly on the other side of the fence is no one. Yeah, like this could be bad. In fact, this probably will be bad. So uh, that is not done. Yeah, so that is for sure not done. Tevgin is played by Conrad Coates, and just an amazing job. The three new actors, Lee Turgeson, Conrad Coates, and Nicole Galatia, just incredible ads. Now Lieutenant BB, I didn't catch his name in the, the the actor who plays him. But uh, he's kind of a side character anyway, so he might have an episode or two where he's a little bit more prominent. But if there's a red shirt around, that's definitely him on the VC side. <laughs> yeah, he, you will die in spectacular fashion, sir. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's happened to all of Daytex men. It happened to the Earth Republic guys. And yeah, it's just going to happen. Well, it's, it's also easy to understand how the Beast will throw him basically under the bus in order to get what he wants because he clearly doesn't have any allegiance. He just needs people to be loyal to him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's bad when you're like, man, Daytech might not be such a bad guy. You're like, oh, this dude's really not good. <laughs> I'm telling you, Daytech was scared of him when he first pulled up. And I that's bad. I don't know if he was scared. I just think he felt under-equipped. Okay. Yeah, he exactly. Concerned. If, if Daytech had had a surface-to-air missile, they wouldn't be having this conversation right now. All right, there is nothing wrong with Daytac's viciousness or courage. Did you see the look on his face when Stom had the charge blade of Christy? He's like, okay, really? What is she going to do? Because he didn't know what she was going to pick. Actually, I thought he looked at her like, it's okay, whatever you decide, I'll back you. I think it, there was a little bit of personal growth, like, all right, well, I trust you. I know you're going to do whatever you need to do. I thought that was the look he gave her. Because look at everything he does with her now. He treats her, unless an they're equal. playing a role, as an equal. Make me one, too. We should go out together. And he's just like, all right, let's do it. Say what you want. This whole genocidal thing that, that they keep living through has done a lot wonders for their marriage. I know, because, he, I mean, before he would have he would have given a crap about her. You know, and now you could see he truly loves her. He's like, he I'm values, not going to leave you he here loves with him. and values and cherishes her, which is really what that whole marriage should have been doing. Now, it took... Killing a bunch of people in the planet almost ending to get them to this relationship point, which I would suggest to you may <laughs> be extreme. Counseling. Yeah, may be extreme. <laughs> However, they're in a good place now. You know, they're together on this stuff. So I can't be mad at them. I think they were together. Yeah, I agreed. They went through all this stuff. But when they were leaving Defiance in the truck. With oh, yeah. No, I think they were all totally clear on the that. The yeah. three of them were working together. I love that line. If your wife has hurt her, she would die in excruciating death. <laughs> and he's like, and if she hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> he's just like calling her like, oh, come on, you're going to kill her. Same outcome. Like, I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> and Rafe, he's not blinking. He's like, yeah, okay. Well, it, this has to happen. I, I mean, let me just say, let me just say how impressed I was 
by the emotion on his face that Graham Greene gave out when his son was shot in the head, the screaming yeah. that he did. That scene was so touching. Graham Greene did an excellent I, job. I was setting up some gear in the other room while that was going on, you know, doing some lighting work and all that kind of stuff. I was setting up a bunch of gear and I couldn't see what was going on. I did hear, bloop, 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 ah, bloop, 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 ah. I mean, Shannon must have played that like five or six times. I'm like, how many times is somebody getting killed out there? She goes, oh, it's a fantastic scene. You should come out and watch this. I'm looking at scenes and emotions on, you know, you know me. I look at emotions on people's face. So Macaulay, 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 Macaulay. It, it doesn't ring a bell. It, yeah, bang. Oh, oops. Like, yeah. Oh, so yeah, I think Graham did an excellent job. The emotion on his face was right on. So it's going to be a sore loss for Defiance without him around. Absolutely. And Christy was actually coming on pretty good. I would agree that Quentin wasn't exactly. He didn't have the growth that Defiance, as in general, did, and he was still stuck basically in those first few episodes of season one his character the mindset and how he acted whatever so i think he was a little out of place which is why i wanted to put him off in california right but christy she had evolved wonderfully my god that character is gonna be missed i know so the macaulay's in general i mean that's just that's gonna be a big loss and i was so hoping that my naive brain was working i was just hoping that maybe she had cut her just skin deep to make it look like she killed her yeah right i was hoping i was really hoping no so. when stomach commits she commits man but on a happier side on a funny note i mean just tell you if you're a parent there is no way a baby's going to be that quiet ever in a closet i don't see how that was so unrealistic to me would, would our kids be that quiet our kids can't physically be that quiet it's not a human baby though it's a human casethan mix i mean it's not normal it's it's got some intricacies to it so it might have some natural fear to it like oh i need to be quiet now or i'm else hoping I'm... it grows up and breathes fire and game of be... thrones it, look <laughs> game of thrones has baby dragons this could be it they're not baby anymore buddy yeah oh yeah ain't that the truth i saw one the other day and i'm like she cannot control those <laughs> i haven't watched any of this season <laughs> so, so, sorry genie <laughs> i'm telling you I, I i will miss nicole being on there because you're like you said i think she had character growth she had just become a mom. She was settling in. She was she had afraid. killed a chick. I mean, she's grown. No, I honestly, I think we're fifty fifty as a show now. And the way um, that she spit out that Castathin language, you know, all cursing at him, and she somebody's like, <gasps> she don't know what she's talking about. Yep. Well, there's Alec is the only one left of that growing up kid generation, the young adult generation. <laughs> he is yeah. literally the only one left now um, in the entire town. I mean, the boys that we saw were younger. All dead. Yeah, and they're getting killed off one by one now too. So you know, I I thought that was a little naive for him. I mean, you're running out in the middle of the woods in the snow looking for Pilar, who's taking your child, and all of a sudden, all well, of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, there's headlights to come on. I don't know, maybe just, he was frantic. Yeah, the last forty eight hours hysterical. were a little bit. Cut, okay, let's back up a second. I didn't have a chance to talk about this when Pilar takes Alec out into the woods. Do you think she was going to kill him? No, I did expect her to kill him in the trailer, like for him to wake up dead I and her to take. I think she drugged him. I th I thought she was gonna. So like, you wake up dead? Is that what happens? You're dead and then you wake up. I think he sleeps with the fishes. Okay. You know, like we wake up or the camera wakes up and sees him dead and her like getting out of the cabin because she's. I mean, cause I thought that was going to be the the death trap for everybody except Pilar, to be honest, and the kid. You know, because I knew she she'd steal him from what she says because she doesn't trust him. He's not family to her. Right. I'm not your mom. I'm Christie's, which I'm going to take care of this child. Yeah. And you are she not She doesn't family. trust him because he is the son of the Tars, which she is clearly hostile against. And he's Votan, which she's not a big fan of either because she's racist. So, yeah. yeah, I knew that she was going to lose him. I thought she was going to kill him. Let me just predict this here, because as much as I disliked Pilar last season, I'm thinking she's not going to turn out as bad. I mean, she's still evil. She's still stupid, bad. But, she's horrible already. But I'm thinking, I mean, she clearly is doing it for the baby. Now, hopefully there's no rat poisoning put in his food anytime soon. But Yeah, I was just going to say, wait, in a little while, she's going to turn, oh, well, maybe I do need to do the rat poisoning again. So I just, you cannot trust her, unfortunately. I, no, you can't trust her at all. Would have been a little bit more fine with her if she had stuck with Alec because she would realize that she's old. And that Alec had a longer longevity to look after Luke eventually. 
that's the mindset that I would hope for her to have. And she didn't. She was like, no, I need to get out of here and I need to get away from Alec. And then I guess plot requires Alec needed to be captured so that he would be used as a tool against the TARS. I would completely agree with all those things. I kept hoping for, and you saw it for a second. You saw it for a second when she's like, you know, this is what your family does and this is what we're doing now. I killed strangers for family. They killed family for themselves. That was um, the one clarity moment that she it had. It was one. It was like, oh, Sarah Connor. There she is. There she is. We're going to get badassery. Just hold on. Just wait. Just wait. And then you're like, oh, it's Pilar. I forgot. <laughs> now, it was kind of badassery when, whenever she talked those people to let her in the trailer and they set her weapon outside and all of a sudden, I mean, <laughs> like within seconds, out, boom, boom. she just opened it and Alex like, oh. Oh my God! She just—I mean, it was. Oh no, she's a basket of crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's—it's very bad. Don't you don't want none of her on you? Nothing. But yeah, it's not that she's not capable. It's the fact that she is capable it's and a basket crazy. of crazy yeah. that is a problem. Yeah, I. Basket of crazy and purple people leaders. We need shirts. <laughs> Conquer, kill, devour. Basket, basket of, crazy. of crazy. Purple people eaters. This town needs a sensitively worded obituary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Got to get my yeah, yeah's out, huh? Oh, Yule, talk to Yule. Oh, that's good, Trina. Yule. Trina, if you're listening to this, these episodes were amazing for your character. She is an amazing, amazing character and a great actor <laughs> to just get in there and be like, "Yeah, what's up?" You it know? was pointed out by Arissa Wi-Fi that at the end of the last episode, when they're playing, "You're my best friend," and all the power and the lights are coming back on at the end of it. While Doc was in her office, the light came on, and there's the frog. Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> there's our frog. I think not. Yeah, the frog was pre- pretty prevalent. We got a lot of feedback. And she did say if there was a season three, she would make out with the frog. <laughs> We're going to hold her to it. So, yeah, Arissa Wi-Fi did that tweet. Trenna herself was asked a question by at Ocean363, and do you still have that frog from your office in Defiance? Her answer was yes. And Matt Boardman, who we interviewed at the end of season two. He did a meme for it. She reposted it. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Froggy, froggy on the wall. Who's the fairest doc of all? So that was pretty cool. Thanks all for the frog love. Sean really appreciates you <laughs> <laughs> bringing forth the creativity of his mind, which is... Exactly. We all need more defines frog porn. It's just something that we require as a fandom. It's important. So do you think when Yule was leaving, she was going to pack up the frog in the suitcase? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't Shove leave frog. it down in the bag, fold it over. <laughs> Ooh, fold it over. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it creak. Or... <laughs> you know. Hope it doesn't have any bones in it left. <sighs> oh, no. She's, she's mounted those on a different frog. <laughs> that's, that's in the bedroom. I see. I see. <laughs> What'd you guys think of the big ball of gulanite? Big glowy blue ball with the Big little blue. Saturn like rings around it. Little blue balls everywhere. It was big. It was huge. It took up the whole. Yeah, they had the little small ones that would. Cavern of the mine. I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, Any, anytime you get. I like to... his magical powers. That they the magical powers is what I call them. But when he touches things and with the performa, what is it? With? Protoform. Protoform. Look like pancakes to me. I wonder if he got his hands actually on Yule. If she would just turn into a puddle. I think she could, which is why she's terrified of him. Yeah, yeah. Like, he could morph her himself. And I'm wondering if the Omec were the ones who created the Indigenes, or at least helped with it. I gotta think they were behind it, like... Because they needed it. The whole lore is that they come by, you know, when the planets align, whatever, they come by with their ships, and then they take away hundreds of thousands of Votans, whatever, and for slaves, and then for food later, whatever. But I think... When that happened, some of the more ingenious Omex stayed behind and manipulated things behind the scenes so that they got things their way, like the creation of the indigents, for instance. Manipulate politics, you know, have a little snack every once in a while. Jack the Ripper. They were Absolutely. creating food. So. Well, they were creating, I mean, look at them. Their food, their med kits, their... Warriors. Shock troops, their scientists. I mean, they're... And he says, you know, they're useful for a bunch of purposes. Did you see how quickly the Omec chick took down both Arissa and Nolan? Yeah. Yeah, she's hot. She kicked their ass. She did. It was awesome. But she was, she almost respected Nolan when they were talking back and forth. Kapow. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what that whole thing was. I mean, at a certain point in me, I mean, Arissa leaves and it's like, okay, well, this is kind of odd. And then I watched it again. <laughs> I'm like, 
there is a little bit of flirting going on there. And she left. She's like, oh, my God, here he goes again. You know, you weren't going to eat me, were you? I would totally flirt with her. I know you would. And then you'd be eaten. I would. Yes, but it'd be worth it. Look, at, have you seen her? My God, that woman's beautiful. I don't think you'd get to touch her, though. I think. Oh, yes, you would. If she's eating you by definition, you're going to touch her. Yeah, well, you're not going to be alive. <laughs> she's touching you. <laughs> Feel it. I just don't uh, think it's going to turn out how you think it's going to turn out. You don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing. Well, yeah, so she am I. She decide to keep parts of you. Exactly. I would be fine being her love slave. It would you, be just, fine. Just, I'm so excited to see what she does to Stama next week. That's, that's you want to see her liquor. I do. <laughs> that was paused at that. I was paused at that scene right there, and I'm talking to my friend. I'm like, please tell me what happens because I have to know. See, you're doing the same thing I am. You're just assuming she's not going to eat Stama. She's not. Gonna eat, well, she might eat part of her. <laughs> <laughs> There's fanfic about that. I'm sure there will be. <laughs> oh, hey, Tack has There's a weapon. Some memes for you. Tack has a weapon, and it's a secret. Secret weapon. Secret. I think it's a nuke. Yeah, he was like, I'm not going to tell you. You know, <laughs> I'm like, is it a, what, a ping pong gun? I mean, what, a that t shirt cannon. What, what do you That particular scene when, she, when it was so weird to see Stama go back into the servient, submissive. It was calculated. Cassidy. It was totally calculated. They did Absolutely. it for, on purpose. That was the time when she was serving. She should have been slipping in the poison. That was the time <laughs> to bring out the tea right there. I forgot about the tea. I don't think she has access to, to she lethal tea. She should have brought some with her. She should have brought some with her. Well, right? Because I think this she is Stama. No, the entire time. Keep it in her pocket, nice and warm, like gummy bears, right? See? They Whip may, those things out, yes. She probably left it in the AMC Eagle wagon. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, that's in the Stama pockets. Stama in a, in a station wagon was just wrong. <laughs> and and did, you, did you catch Data? Oh, what what's going on? And she goes, oh, no patrols. Yeah, you were sleeping. <laughs> the Stop entire freaking down on the VC job. army is like less than a half a click away, and she's like, "We're clear." <laughs> you well, suck good. as a scout, girl. <laughs> Sleeping the entire time, <laughs> got busted. And held a gun. She she was surprised, and she whipped that gun out on him. Oh, I I was I wasn't sleeping at all. Busted. Right. Uh, so, Manifest Destiny and the weapon, I'm really curious as to how that's going to turn out, because, wow. There are all a bunch of virused blankets. There, Yeah, there's not that much left on the Earth, right? We got, But we got cool Saturn rings, which we saw at the beginning. That was pretty cool. I'm a big the, fan of the rings. Yeah, when the ship pulled up and everything. I think Earth needs rings, personally. Cause yeah, those would... rings were formed because of the, of the rocks and stuff that were still up in orbit after last season, right? Well, yeah, it's the Votan fleet. That was yeah, crushed, busted well, up, rocks, and everything, and and ships. the gravity and and a natural <clears throat> spinning created effect rings create, creates yep. rings. I mean, that's uh, a lot of planets in the solar cool system effect. actually have rings that you know even even Uranus has rings. So even what I'm not saying it that way. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, you. Drake equation to Uranus. Yeah, we're we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hostage is a dirty word. Yeah, I'm like, and when she's like, oh. That's yeah, that's that's not the word. I'm like, actually, yes, it's exactly the word. <laughs> <laughs> it's that is there is no other She's word chained. for it. What a chained guest. I mean, what are you going to call her? She is a hostage. Let me bring you some water with your key, and we'll, we'll call it even. Right. The jail's going to need some new doors. It's going to need a new roof. You're going to need a new jail. Really you know what? They should have had a new window, and you wouldn't have that problem. Oh, that kid! And you knew that kid was dead as soon as he's like, I don't believe in Omega. Omega's make her stupid. Let me let me poke History it with sucks. Stick. Let me poke it with the stick. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's intelligent. Are those those kids grew up in defiance? Uh, either they that should, or the Badlands. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. They grew up in this world. You should know better than to poke something dangerous with a stick to see what happens. These kids have bad. You know, just no. No parenting. <laughs> well, no. He had plenty of. He had a responsible, educated, loving father who was trying to teach him. Look, man, you need to know this. And this kid had bad evolution skills. You know, it's like, don't poke a bear. See, that's... Don't the poke a hellbug. He should have been taught that as a toddler. Don't poke a hellbug. That's the problem when you have all this nuts and death and destruction around you, and you pretend like you're in a town with walls up, and you don't have to worry about what happens on the other side of those walls. Because that guy, he was an awful shot. I, I would hate to have to <laughs> depend on him hunting for food, right? Because you ain't going to eat. Yeah, I don't think... <sighs> This is not a town with large amenities. I mean, they have a 
prostitution center. They have a jail. They have a city hall and some random buildings. This does not a walled off community make. I mean, you, you, it's not like you're so far removed from the Badlands, death, destruction, you know, spirit riders and anything else that is death and destruction for this. And now you have this dude who is a scholar. That is a world class bad idea to just be a scholar in this world. He's like a librarian, basically. Yeah, because that's totally what you need. Well, who else is going to store Daytac's letter openers? <laughs> oh, that was a great line. He said, think of it as a letter opener. Do you get the, do you catch that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was awesome. <laughs> it is. Well, it was basically appropriate and everything. I, it was a good callback. Really enjoyed it. So at the end, Defiance is repowered. Oh, so Nolan kills. I can't even say his name. I think I got it written down somewhere. It's uh, Favi Kez, uh, whatever. He was a red scholar shirt. Boy. Yeah, scholar boy. So no one kills him. Do you think he was going to surrender or do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think Little Wolf talked him out of it. She appealed to him and, and, that, and his actual nature, which was he's not a killer. And that just proves to you how much of a soldier mold that Nolan is in. Nolan's always in that, though. I know that. But Unless it's Little Wolf. But he was more reserved for the last time because he was all upset when he killed that boy on, on in the second season. But now he's just completely in that mode where, you know what? I think he also did it for the fact that he knows that Arissa wouldn't stop him like she did in the first part of the, of the episode when she just let that guy take the gun out of her hand. So You think she has a death wish? I do. Oh, absolutely. Because when he's like, you know, we don't shoot innocent people. She's like, innocent? Who are you calling innocent? I'm not innocent. So I think she totally has a death wish. She doesn't care. And I think he's concerned for that for clearly, you know, good reason. I think she was talking about the Omeg. When she's like innocent, yeah. No, well, I think she was talking about herself. Yeah, everybody in the jail, I think she was referring to. Yeah, because there's nobody innocent in that entire shot. All right, well, then that's where the three of us disagree. I think she was talking about herself as not being innocent. Mm, yeah, I can't go with you on that. Yeah, I took it as it was Nolan, it was Amanda, it was the OMAC, it was even Berlin, which is a little bit of stress. I think Berlin is the least non innocent, basically. She's not totally innocent, but she's up there, so. And you yeah. were you're saying before that Nolan is always a soldier. Well, not when he's in the need want upstairs. No, that's just a soldier on leave. Eh, okay. <laughs> that's that's all that is. <laughs> you guys got any last thoughts about the episode? Oh man, stop killing people. I know that was tough. That'd be great. <laughs> Kapow. <laughs> she is cool. <laughs> Kapow. And I'm sorry. I've done it a couple of times lately. I've raged quit stuff, and this was really close. Which is really difficult when you have a podcast on something that you want to rage create. It's like, uh, okay, I yeah, gotta stick it out. Yeah, that first 15, 20 minutes, I was just like, oh, come on! <sighs> well, Kevin Murphy did warn us that we might not be happy, so. Well, we are not happy. Well, you know what? So. <laughs> I am happy. I, you know what? I'm even, How can you be happy with even, that? Well, first of all, I'm happy that we freaking got the show back, because that took a long time of waiting. Yeah. So, I'm happy that we're back. In <laughs> all right, fine. Yes, that is to, that is to be happy. I'm not happy with losing Christy. No, at all. In fact, that's uh, Christy and Rafe, but more Christy than anything. More else. Christy than any, either. I mean, Rafe. We put her on money. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We got all the chicks on. We got to make. Oh man, we don't. We don't have any more extra Monopoly money, do we? Can't put her on it. No. We have to create a denomination for. Her. <laughs> what the fifty cent piece? <laughs> Fitty, fitty that. <laughs> have, have Olbeck on there. Kapow. <laughs> In Kapow, we trust. Oh, we so saw we're doing that. We're doing that. All right. But, you know, I don't know. I, I, In fact, that's what I'm calling her. Her, her new name is Kapow. Kapow. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I love that line. I'm really going to miss Christy. Rafe, he was kind of dropped down. I, it, it, when the mines closed and he was working the mines before, you know, when Pottinger was making him work and they took his house, when they sort of taken things from him, to me, they lowered his character so he wasn't yeah, but you aren't your as stuff. important anymore as the main one. So I kind of expected it. I didn't think they're all going to do it in the same house at the same episode, but uh, people are probably going to make crap about this, but I didn't really care about Quentin. No. <laughs> I, nobody I don't, cared about Quentin. I don't. I mean, <laughs> except Rafe. It, it was good to have him around, honestly, to be the other brother to Christy after Luke died. But yeah, it's just he was a he good did, thing that she talked him into unlocking. Quentin was a solid dude, and I don't think anybody, or I don't think like good solid people last long in Defiance. I think you need to be half bastard to live here. So I can tell you, I'm happy that Defiance came back and having these deaths. 
It doesn't throw me off. It doesn't make me not want to watch it. It doesn't make me say, well, there goes that show. I'm not there. So I'm happy that it's all come back. I had a feeling we were going to lose somebody, but you always lose some people. We you lost. optimist, you. You would not last 10 seconds in Defiance. I don't now, know, man. She's a good shot. <laughs> that being said, if we lose Donna, which I don't think they will. If we lose Donna, Shannon has quit watching the show. <laughs> I'm going to be a little upset. Shannon will quit watching the show if we lose Donna. I'm pretty confident we're not going to lose Donna because that would just be wrong in all sorts of levels. She is an amazing character. You see it both with the decision that she had to make with Christy and the decision that she was making with Daytac to kill Tack. That was, and, and just her manipulation throughout the entire thing. It's, it's great. And at the end, we see some scenes from the rest of the season. We have 11 more episodes. Woo-hoo. And it, you get to see her in a couple of scenes. They're back in their house, their white house at some point in time. Don't know how long that's going to last. And uh, you just see her resurgence and return to where we saw her in season one, which is great. And it's season two, too. So. I just can't wait. So, um, guest 55 in the chat asked us to predict who's going to kill General Ram Tak. Is it going to be Daytech or Stalma? I think Nolan. You think? Yeah. All right. Actually, you know what? That's not true. I don't think Nolan. I think it will probably be one of the TARS, to be honest. And uh, if I had my guess, both of them, because they're doing things together now, you know, like as a couple. I don't know. He, You saw in the preview that he had Arissa by the throat, so that's going to take off daddy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it might. I think Nolan and Devkin, Tefkin are going to, that's going to be who gets him. Yeah, that's what Nolan. I was thinking. It would be Tefkin. Because they're setting it up kind of for that. Yeah, Tefkin and General Tack are going to go head on head. And I don't know if one's going to kill the other or they're both going to kill each other or something, but it's going to be a big battle. Here's my prediction for this season. I think that we're going to have the Omec team up with the people of Defiance and set it up. For if we get a season four, they will turn on us at the end of the season. I don't know, babe. This is gonna. This is because, going awful fast. I don't well, know if we're gonna get a four. Well, we may not, but that doesn't mean they won't set it up that way. So you, you got to leave it open in case, right? So like he mm-hmm. was telling his daughter there on the on the table that we have to trust them now because we're the only ones left. But later on, they're gonna wake up and they're gonna need to feed. So he may work with them now for the better good, for their better good, not the towns, because. Like you said, they're surrounded by them, so there's only two. But and he may help get rid of the general. So you think this season four would be about release the people leaders? Yes, I think season four would be perfectly set up at the end of this season if they've been trusted and they've helped all along. And then at the end, okay, now we're gonna wake up our purple people leaders and we're gonna come down. I can see the Volge versus the Omec. That would be that one would be heck cool. of a fight. And I think we actually saw some of those mechs that the Volge have. In the the preview in, for the rest the of the season, so I could see that setting up for a falling skies sort of depiction where you finally get somebody that comes in and takes over the earth, and then you're fighting back guerrilla style. But I don't know how that would work with defiance because defiance is a fixed point. If you're guerrilla fighting, you're not at a well, fixed that's point. That's the whole thing. You stick and move with guerrilla fighting. There's the you know hit them where they ain't and then disappear like mist. I mean that's the whole guerrilla fighting thing. Yeah. So I I don't know. I think it's going to get progressively worse. I don't think there's going to be any character building happy episodes. I think we're going to have mostly death, destruction, and war. Well, I think they'll get the baby back. They'll be happy for that, I guess. Maybe at the end, but that'll be about it. I don't, I don't think so, because Pilar can just disappear off now. <laughs> I wonder if um, Stama's going to get little bath toys now. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber ducky, squeaky, squeaky. <laughs> <laughs> there might not be ducks by now, but you know. Okay. So you got to get some kind of bath toys with the, for the floating cast of them, baby. Let's see. I have a note written down that I didn't get to. When Arissa and Nolan wake up next to each other, Arissa says, your breath stinks. She does not say, you're an idiot. Well, <laughs> leave it to Arissa to be practical. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I think that shows that she's in a different headspace because normally she would say, you're an idiot. And she did not. Well, I, you got to feel for the actual actors in the show if, like what Kevin was tweeting at the very, that is not fake snow, that is not CGI, that they were actually there and they're actually freezing. So it was a cold being, winter. Knowing that that was the coldest winter in Toronto recorded. Yeah, the last seven. two years have just been, yeah, they, they've sucked. So, so. C- congrats to the actual people suffering through all that crap. Yep, yep. To bring us our favorite show. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they're just driving down a plowed road. What? There's plows? Really? Yeah. We're, 
Where did the plow come from? Who drives the plow? <laughs> Hashtag defiance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we did get some feedback. We got an email from our listener, Andy. Thank you very much, Andy. I'll point out a couple of things that he said in the email. This new ship arriving, I bet they are friendly and want to help the inhabitants of Earth. Yeah, okay, So Andy. they want to eat them, yes. Help them into the <laughs> stew pot, maybe, but that's about <laughs> it. And then another thing that he said is, looks like the mayor, which is Amanda, took some lessons in kneecapping from John Reese on Person of Interest. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. John Reese loves to kneecap because he doesn't like to kill. He kneecaps instead. And I would say well, the, still effective. the standard of medical care in defiance is way below any standard of medical care you can get in New it's York City be some today. some sanctions on those people. Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, he says, holy shit, taco, after Christy had such a stellar season, I'm now in stock over Stalma needed to kill her. Yep. And again, I pointed out that I, I it took me the second watch through to get to the point where I'm like, oh, she they were. She didn't do it because she hated Christy. Right. She it, clearly did it to save the baby in Daytech. It wasn't a Daytech versus Christy thing. It was a baby versus Christy right, thing. Right, because the whole... The baby's arm showing in the closet. I mean, that I think in Stalin's mind, the baby was seconds away from being noticed. And that's why, because she was clearly hesitant, and he even said so. So she didn't want to kill Christy, and that's my firm belief. But she did it because she looked at the baby and, okay, oh, holy crap, the baby's about to be discovered, and we're all going to die anyway. So she had to do what she had to do. So if you want to go ahead and email me, you can email me at stargatepioneer at gunnageek.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear a voicemail from you. And that is 612-888-ARC-1 or 612-888-2751. And I do understand about the international call thing because it happened to me on the other side where I tried to call an international number and couldn't. So you can go ahead and email me or email me an MP3. It's great. You can also email Sean at turdferguson at gunnageek.com. And what? <laughs> just heard Ferguson. Just oh my God, you didn't. <laughs> great name. <laughs> just kidding there. There is no email set up, but I'm sure if we, if we really need some, if there's fan upswell for that, we will have Steven go do that. So it, next you can week. also email me at swampassmith <laughs> at gunnageek.com. <laughs> so next week, we will be podcasting about Broken Bow. It is the episode three of season three. So it'll be cool. We'll be here at gunnageek.com slash live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. You guys got any parting shots? Kapow! That was my, you stole my line. <laughs> As Caitlin say. All right. So don't forget to go to gunnageek.com. Look for the Voices of Defiance page. You can find that, uh, uh, everything there. Or go to our website at voicesofdefiance.com. So until next time, I'm Stargate Pioneer saying, well... I was going to say kapow too. So thanks, John. <laughs> you stole it from everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Kapow. Kapow. Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Voices of Defiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com, or send us a voicemail at area code 612-888-ARC-1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Tryon video game Defiance. Music titled After the Apocalypse by Snishnook and Rocket Easy by Sound Road can be found on pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hell bugs. Yeah, for now. So you're saying it, it's messing up because I use it at night? Well, because we keep both of us use the mic at a different position. So we. If you would just show me how to lower that bar, oh. then I wouldn't Which have to move it because when I sit down, it's like up in my. Up in my eyes. Well, I'm taller than you. Well, I know that. that that's why it's been moved. <laughs> Your mic because is in her eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the level. <laughs> so if we can just lower the bar, then I won't have to adjust this at all. You mean I should lower it so you could get it to your mouth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to. I'll show you how to do it. Although speaking of professional, let yes. me let me let me give you a future reference. Yes, sir. 
when you tell an artist do yes. a logo <laughs> okay. and what you meant was give me a branding treatment your artist will strangle you yes sir <laughs> Uh, that's not a big deal. I figured it out. I'm like, oh, for f- sake. And it took me a minute because I'm like, what are these f- doing? They should have told. I'm like, they're f- professional. I did they're tell, not, I did tell you about the YouTube. I did tell you about the YouTube. Well, the, that one I would have been fine with. It was the, the, uh, the 1920 header. by 1080 and then the... Yeah, you that's know, the one I'm talking the, about. Uh, no, no, no. That one I had. Okay. It's the... Because it wasn't that much strange or different than the uh, the square one. It was the... I need 1100 by 143 yeah. and I'm like <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. We I was we ready have, for you the second time. We need to gather all the requirements up next time we yeah, do yeah. anything. Anyway, it wasn't a big deal. But they turned out okay. It turned out amazing. <laughs> it's like flooding the streams this morning. I'm like, "Oh, I got to put it here. I got to put it here. I got to put it here. <laughs> I got to put it here. You know, it's got to go everywhere." <laughs> Well, it's a step up from the the black avocado looking thing you have. Oh, yeah. God, yes. Broadcast has been successfully terminated.